<laughs> this is Kibera City, Kibera Town, Kuna Matata. According to various reports, an estimated 1 billion men, women and children live in informal and ill-equipped settlements. These settlements, commonly referred to as slums, are distinctly identified by their lack of basic social amenities vital for normal daily living, with a lack of proper structures being dominant. The absence of such structures as shelter, drainage and sewer systems, schoolhouses, recreational centres, just to mention a few, have negatively impacted the lives of this populace. One such settlement is Nairobi's Kibera slum, home to approximately 235,000 to 270,000 men, women and children, with more than three quarters of them children, more than two thirds of the children are of the female gender. Catapulted to global infamy for its flying toilets, Kibera remains the yardstick for the need for solutions to basic sanitation needs such as bath and toilet facilities. This crisis has been a major catalyst for a series of serious health and economic concerns. Hand in hand with the housing problem is a lack of toilet facilities. Toilets are mostly communal pit latrines where a collection of approximately 300 or more men, women and children share one pit. The ones at most risk, however, remain the young children whose immune systems are still developing. Research has proven that one out of five children under the age of 10 never see adulthood due to health-related complications within the majority of such complications rising from sanitation-related illnesses. Left without alternatives, this society has been left with two options. Open defecation or defecating in non-degradable plastic bags and disposing them at random anywhere in their neighbourhood, including throwing them on their rooftops. Flying toilets, they're called, or at random spots heightening the health risks. The lack of facilities extends to institutions with the main focus being schools. Like everything else in Kibera, they're mostly informal and lack many amenities. Sanitation has been a key issue in this setting that hosts thousands of children from different ethnicities. It is shocking how the lack of toilet facilities has contributed hugely to poor academic performances. Okay, kabla ya people ikuje, tulikuwa na shida sana. Kwa hawa wanafunzi ambao tuko nao tulikuwa na choo kimoja, ndicho wa wanafunzi na ndicho cha walimu. Lakini hapa nyuma yetu tulikuwa na mtaro. Tulikuwa tunautumia kama urino kwa boys. Lakini wakati wa haja kubwa ilikuwa ni problem, lazima tungojane. Sa ilikuwa mbungana wanafunzi na walimu wanapo ingia kwa choo. Tangu mradi wa pipo ingie tumeweza kupata faida mingi. Wakati tulikuwa na choki moja ilikuwa inachukua time sana kulingana na idadi ya wanafunzi ambao tunao. Kitambo tumaliza darasa fulani, darasa mingi unapata sasa ilikuwa ina affect lessons. Lakini tangu ziingie unapata imekuwa rahisi na hata kuna ile mpaka ya choo ya walimu na choo ya wa, wa watoto wanafunzi. Hasa imetusaidia kwa upande na time consuming sasa ya hatuchelewi sana. Wanafunzi haswa hao wa shule ya chekechea eh, kufika darasa la pili la tatu unajua kwa wakati mwingi walikuwa hawezi wakastahimili pengine haja kwa hiyo ulikuwa unapata kwamba wakati wametolewa pengine kwenda kwa haja unapata kwamba wale wakubwa kawaida watawatangulia na katika hali ya kustahimili kwa wanafunzi hawa unapata kwamba wengine wamejiendea hata haja kwa nguo kwa hiyo kaukua kwamba ni kazi ngumu mwalimu kushughulika pengine kufundisha ama kuandaa pia However, solutions are sought by concerned parties, organizations and individuals. One such organization is Peepoopal. Peepoopal Kenya provides a single-use biodegradable toilet widely accepted by the residents known as the Peepoo. So when Peepoopal brought the idea of having those bags, they are disposable, they are degradable, we embraced it and since we started using it, I would say that it has had many advantages to the pupils. And then this one is now very comfortable. They sit on it and they feel it good. Okay, when uh, we used to use the pit latrine in the past, there was also the problem with the smell. 
the flies and the school was forced to go into other extra uh, costs like buying the detergents, the air fresheners, but since the people pool was brought, okay, the pit latrine has reduced its usage. So we have reduced, we've cut down some costs of uh, draining the, the pit, the smells has gone down, and I would also say that the flies have disappeared. They are taken good care of, they are washed, they are cleaned, and that is that. So the advantages is that we no longer have flies around, we no longer have maybe urine on the floors to bring the smell up. So there is no smell, there is no flies. The Pipu School program emphasizes the awareness and good practices in daily personal hygiene, as well as social awareness through hygiene training for school children and staff via workshops, training sessions, and the constant presence of a Pipu bull attendant in institutions involved for guidance. Another measure taken is the provision of access to clean, easy to use and comfortable toilet facilities through setting up and maintaining peepoo friendly cabins, soap and water in the schools. These cabins have hugely reduced the chances of children, parents and staff contacting deadly contagious diseases, lowered the risks to physical harm among the younger children as parents and teachers attest when the previously used pit latrines posed a threat to children below the age of 10. <laughs> Ulikuwa unapata labda watoto wamekuja kwa shule saa 12 ya asubuhi na unasikia ati mtoto mguu imekwama ndani ya choo. Kwa sababu huko nje mtu akilea mtoto sana sana hapa e, unajua sisi sana sana tunakuwa na flying toilets. Watu wengi sehemu mingi hatu na choo. Sasa unapata hata mtoto kujifunza kwenda kwa shimo ya choo ilikuwa ni shida. Ha, unapata wanaingisha sana, ilikuwa mada, wa madam walikuwa na cases ile ngumu sana kwa sababu ilikuwa unapata mtoto badala kwenda akanyage mgu pande na pande, alikuwa naingiza mgu ndani ya cho. Sasa hizo ndio bitu tulikuwa changamoto jene tulikuwa tunapitia hapa sana sana. All children prefer the Pipu toilet system in comparison to the pit latrines they previously used because they say latrines are dirty, maggot infested and risky to use. The success of the PIPU program in Kibera's schools has now become a branding and marketing symbol. Schools with the PIPU system attract more school kids. The program has also indirectly contributed financially to parents, especially those with younger children who've had to buy nappies on a daily basis, a huge hurdle for a society living way below the poverty line. Um, I am a parent in this school, that is Jex Academy. I have two pupils here. I think they are doing very well in the school. I'm also happy as a parent because since the people was introduced in this school, at least I've been relieved. I used to awake the one in nursery class very early so that he can go to the loo, but now there is no problem. The information I got is that we have new toilets in the school that is, they are called the people. They used to call them the people, but now they call them the people. They told me, Mom, you should get us a people. So I tried to see whether I can get one for them. And according to, I got another woman who was selling them and I bought, them for, I bought the people for, to them. Unapata labda, wazazi walikuwa naleta pambas da watoto kwa wingi. Uh, unapata labda mzazi amekosa pesa kununua pambas. Mtoto anakunya kwa nguo lakini siku hizi vile people iletu hapa unapata uh, watoto wanakuja kwa shule kitu ya kwanza watoto wanapata uraisi wa kuja kwa shule. Wazazi wenye wana pesa kununua pambas sasa wanasikia kuna uraisi. With a reach of 10,000 children in 63 institutions, the Pipu School program has proved a sanitation and social game changer. A major question amongst the students, teachers, parents and community has been where the used people go to. Basically collection is moving, uh, collecting all the people which have been used either in the drop points or from the schools and uh, we take them to, we have a temporary holding area 
where we keep the peoples for four weeks and uh, we make sure that uh, they are completely san sanitized. In their efforts for sanitation, Peepoople Kenya has collaborated with other partners with the sole aim to improve health by not only sanitation standards but also food nutrition through an agricultural program currently underway in Kibera schools and places with space with the heightened need for the use of the pipu as manure in school gardens to grow vegetables for consumption by the students and staff for proper growth of their academic progress. In Kibera, we don't have lots of space to do a garden on the ground. So we came up with a garden on sack due to space. That is what we do in schools. We do, we do garden in, in, in sacks and it really helps in food security in, in our schools. A program of great benefits to the children, the Pipu effect has rippled down to the general community where children have suggested it to their parents who have in turn suggested it to their neighbours In result increasing demand for the Pipu use not only in schools but also households. This ripple effect has not only attained the goodwill of the community but increased demand for distribution and supply of the Pipu across Kibera and beyond. In this light, Peepoople Kenya and her sister Peepoople AB Sweden hope to improve daily lives in sanitation and ease daily living for the greater good of generation after generation to come. <laughs> Bile mimi niko unafanya bibi chunga sana hata mimi nakuja